Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We give you praise for grace that is poured upon my lips to minister your word to your people. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let your word bring transformation to our hearts all as the word comes to us undiluted in the name of Jesus. Give us the spirit of wisdom and of revelation, the knowledge of you, because the eyes of understanding to be enlightened. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So where we ended it yesterday was that I was talking about um, verse 4, and I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Um, now, this is a great puzzle to a lot of believers. And those who felt they understood it back in the days, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses seemed to have a solution um, to the problem. But it was not a solution. It was not an accurate solution. It was not a God-given solution. It was just a thinking of the mind. They said, Jehovah's Witnesses told us that um, these are people that are going to go to heaven. Every other person will remain on the earth. It's only 140 and 4,000 that will go to heaven. And I've also seen certain sects also, um, surprisingly, uh, among Bible-believing and uh, um, kingdom-loving people who believe that these are, these are Jews and um, the Jews will go to and then um, these Jews are select, are specially selected to go to um, heaven. You know that. Um, I met one of those kinds of sects um, some time ago. And then they so exalted the Jewish nation to a, uh, the highest heights. You know, but one of the reasons why one can get into that kind of, um, my apologies, is I want to let my technical group know that this, uh, I don't know whether phone call can come into this device so that we will not need to um, encounter a break in transmission at any point in time. So I just remembered that right now. So we need to do that. Um, praise God. So much. It's not our site. Picture is too large. And this is too much. A too much. My apologies, God speaking. I would like to begin again. Yep. Uh, it's okay. That's all. Okay. Okay, so um, where are we recording here? Here. So I should start recording now. Yes, sir. I think it's recording. It's recording. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll begin again. Um, so we're talking about the fact that where we left it off yesterday was uh, this verse 4 of chapter 7. And I heard the number of those who were still 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Now, I said the, that was a puzzle for a lot of believers uh, back in the days because most of the things we understood about the coming of the Lord we were seen from the evangelical point of view. And at the evangelical revival, we were not given all that had to do with the end of the faith. We were not given everything that we can know about the beginning to the end. We were only given the beginning. In the Pentecostal revival, we're given the middle. It is in the kingdom revival that will be given 
where we saw the Baba Bela and the movements, all of them are movements, you know, that will be given the accuracy of the end of our journey as believers in Christ Jesus. So, um, so the Jehovah's Witnesses have told us that these people are um, uh, the 144,000, they are the people that will be taken to heaven, and then uh, every other person will remain on the earth. And then I have also encountered certain other sects joined and then subscribed to by certain Bible believing people, even people with a kingdom mindset, which believe that these are going to be Jews that will be sent to, uh, that will go to heaven and all that. You know, but nobody would believe that, that if one had a, an accurate understanding of God's word, the accurate of the understanding of God's word is the regeneration of man. It is not the exaltation of an ethnic grouping or of a people. Yes, they, uh, especially when it comes to kingdom rule and reign. Kingdom rule and reign is different from material blessing and prosperity. Concerning material blessing and prosperity, God will bless the seed of Abraham. And when it comes to kingdom rule and reign, they are meant to be uh, midwives, midwives of the king of the of the nature of God coming into man. Number one, by being keepers, as as uh, Paul has said in Romans chapter three, that first of all they were the keepers, they were the um, they were the keepers of the mysteries of God. Um, Custodians, yeah, that's the word. They, they were custodians of the mysteries of God, you know. And uh, secondly, they produced the Lord Jesus Christ, and eventually they killed Jesus Christ. But also, fourthly, they were the first people to get into the faith, you know, understand. And they were the first people that the Lord used to bring men into the faith. Now, so God does not, I mean, uh, um, when it comes to kingdom rule and reign, it is not about the tribe whether God made a covenant with that tribe or not, it's about regeneration. If you get that, so it's about regeneration. If, and when I talk about regeneration, I'm not talking about being born again, the initial one that, that we got, that we got by, a, a, uh, by saying, Lord Jesus, I, I submit my life to you. You know, I believe that you have died for me. And that is salvation, uh, initial level of our salvation. The regeneration of the of the heart, you know, the regeneration of the heart is the embrace, not only the embrace, but also the demonstration of the life of God from the root of the heart. Not just religion, not because in a certain church group, certain things are not supposed to be done. So because they are not supposed to go in your church group, you are embraced it. No, you know that work and played a little bit in the ever in the evangelical movement especially uh, between the evangelical movement and the Pentecostal movement. It was between that that we had the Pentecostal holiness movement. And the Pentecostal holiness movement, there were laws. And that was where we had the influence of Methodists, the Wesleyan beliefs, and all of that mixed with um, Pentecost, Pentecost, you know. And then, so we have different kinds of churches that have different kinds of um, laws and rules, which was able to and top men to some extent, at least in, by physical ordinance, to obey God in certain situations and circumstances. But I mean, and then um, relating to God's words and all that. But you see, um, God does not count that as um, He does not. That one does not hold water with God. Truth is that God, what what holds water with God, what holds water with God, what counts with God is that that thing that you have. You, uh, when you are children, you know, as a child, because laws are set for us when we are children. You understand? So they, even Apostle Paul said that, you know, um, I, I, you know, uh, uh, you know, when we are children, we were led. You know, the Jewish nation was said to be a, ch a child, a children nation, and they were led when they were led by the law. When faith, when faith came, when grace came, they had to receive uh, the uh, uh, grace by faith. Now, also among these churches that have the, 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 they are telling you the, the length of clothes to wear the whether you should wear trouser or not. Now, if you only obey because of what they say, that, that is because of the pressure of the society, because every church eventually becomes like a society when they become a denomination. So when you only obey because of that the pressure and your acceptance within that spiritual uh, environment, it is not so much counted for maturity in Christ. Hallelujah. It is when you are 
when you are at liberty. Without liberty, there can be no test. Somebody say, why didn't God prevent uh, Adam and Eve from sinning? Because there needs to be liberty. If there is no liberty, you cannot be said to sin or not to sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. If there is no liberty, you cannot be said to be able to sin or not to sin. You understand? I am not saying that we should let people run amok and run free and uh, do anything they like. No. But there has to be a measure of liberty so that the person can make choices. Without choices made by us, we cannot uh, be said to be free to obey God or not. You know, it's just like our children. When uh, I was hearing um, uh, this um, woman of God that talks about marriage, uh, Mrs. Funke Adejuma, you know, she was sharing about the, the, the fact that there are three levels uh, um, and stages which you have with your children, you know, relationship that a parent will have with their children. And he said, she said the first one is the level of authority and command. He said, sit down there. Don't do that. Don't do that. He said, later, they will now um, begin to get, um, to get their own liberty. And then they begin to advise you and all of that. Then she talked about the third one, which I didn't have enough time to listen to. You know, but I took what she said on that first one. The first one is, we will begin to tell people, do this, do that, do that, do that. And it's a good one. It's a good thing. But it is only preparing them to see the benefit of obedience. Because they're going to grow beyond the place of receiving commandments. The, pe the young lady that we're saying, don't do this wrong way, that one day she's going to go out and she's going to be doing youth service. She's going to live alone by herself. She's going to walk in a distant place by herself. And then, of course, the good thing about what commandment does is that at least you have seen the path of, of obedience, even though it was an enforced or a pressured obedience. You understand? So you can make your choice between, I was, God hasn't given you the privilege to see enforced obedience. You can make your choice to be able to obey, to be able to keep enjoying the, uh, 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 the benefits that come from obedience to God. So there's going to be that time when that person is going to be faced with God. Even, you know, our ministers also, it happens to us. Now, there are certain things that may not be able to, that may not happen um, in our lives because of the church uh, environment. But there are times we, we have to be outside you are in another land, in another town where nobody knows you. You know, everybody faces it at one time or the other. Hallelujah. So, well, what brought us is not what something brought us to that play, but it, you know, so so when when the so the Pentecostal holiness movement, where it was the movement that that gave a lot of loss to their church members, hallelujah. But that you know, but, but the regeneration is of the heart, and it's not about being confessing Jesus Christ, I'm born again. It's beyond that, hallelujah. After you have been born again, then God begins to work on your heart. Redemption is not actually complete until God fully works in our heart. You know, redemption is in two places. What Christ has done for us and what Christ is doing in us. Hallelujah. What Christ has done for us and what Christ is doing in us. So what Christ has done for us, he has done it by himself. Nobody helped him out. It was redemption only done and fulfilled by Jesus Christ. But what Christ is doing in us is trying to walk in us both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. So for some people, it may take 30 years, some people may take 20 years, some people may take 10 years, some people may take 15 years to, to live in a particular stage of their spiritual growth and development. But what God wants is so that, you know, and God, you know, God takes us through God takes us through situations where he shows us the benefit of obedience and where we, we rejoice when we obey. And then, then we, when, we, when, we, when we go the other way, he shows us also what can happen. He's, he keeps showing us this continually. So you see some people keep having certain temptations over and over and over and over and over. God is trying to tell them to get to the place of maturity where they can choose the good and reject the evil. The Bible says, in the, um, that is in Hebrews in chapter 5, it says, it says uh, let's let's quickly see that. I hope it doesn't take me away from my teaching. Uh, one of the reasons why I don't like to open scriptures, uh, especially when it's not along the line of which they are teaching, is because I don't want it to take us into something um, way far, far, far away. Praise God. All right. So it says, it says, but solid food belongs, you know. 
Sebes Oliver belongs to those who are of full age, that is, who by reason of use, do you see that, have, who by reason of use have their, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And that's the renewal of the mind. You know, the mind is not just that I have this information from the world before. Now I've stored this other information from, from the Bible or from the kingdom. It has to enter into our heart and become a lifestyle. That is when the renewal of the mind is complete. Praise God. So from the line, from the viewpoint of uh, the evangelical and the Pentecostal holiness movement, we could not see the end of our faith. But from the viewpoint and from the point of, the, of even the Pentecostal, full Pentecostal and the charismatic movement, we were not able also to see. We only saw the things we can do and enjoy and be blessed by. God has given me this. God can give me this. Can give me children. Can give me husband. Can give me wife. Can give me uh, money. Can give me health and all of that. But we were not able to see the end of. Not that people were not thinking of heaven. Yeah, all that we could see was heaven. We didn't know about what accrued, you know, relating to it. You understand? That's why Paul told us in the in Hebrews in chapter six. He says, "Let us now." Uh, uh, he says, "Let us leave the childhood childhood thing, not laying again." the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptism, of the laying on of hands, of, uh, of, the, resurrection of, of, of the resurrection of the dead, and of divine judgment. I mean, and of divine, yeah, and of, um, I think eternal judgment or something. Eternal judgment, that's the judgment which God brings on uh, when people begin to receive their rewards. You see, so we have done, the church has been able to fulfill this place. And when I say the church has been able to fulfill this, for I've everybody has already, Gained what never whatever needed to be gained in it. What I mean is that the, it is it is if you care to listen, you will hear it in the church. If you care to walk with God in that realm, you will hear it in the church. You can walk with God in those realms. Praise God. You see, but and so we have uh, 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 repentance from dead work, uh, um, doctrine of baptism, um, doctrine of the laying on of hands, and all of those uh, faith towards God. Those ones are already in the body of Christ. Every people are saying it from one um, from one pulpit to the other. But of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment has to do with the end of our faith. And for that, for that, a lot of people do not understand how that works. So this is what the Book of Revelation tells, tells us about. So these guys, the one twenty four thousand. And not the people, they are not the people that are going to heaven, like the Jehovah's Witnesses want us to believe. There is only one for people that are going to heaven. And it is not the Jews. It's about, it, it's of the sons of God, the believers. The sons of God is by choice. Being a son is by choice. You know, being a child, you are born, but being a son, growing to maturity when you become, uh, come into sonship is by, uh, is by choice. You know, being a child is not by choice, but being a son is by choice. Hallelujah. So that is working with God, moving on with God, um, getting to the place of maturity. I don't want to go into it all over, but I want to say it once more that um, so that for the benefit of those who may have heard, uh, may not have heard about it before, that sonship in the palace of the Jews, in the way the Jews use the word sonship, is not just that you are born by a father. Okay, I'm back. All right. Thank God. I'm back. Praise God. Uh, we have more than 40 gig of data there. So. Praise God. Now, so is a son, is somebody, you are, as a son of a farmer, uh, son of a goldsmith, then you were, you were, uh, your, your, you began to learn the train of your father. You began to learn the train of your father. When you get to the place where you mature and you, you have fully learned the train of, your, the train of your father, then your father does a little party. We call it freedom in the west of Nigeria. So I uh, want to, to do freedom, professional freedom, maybe as a tailor or as a blacksmith or whatever, you know, when your master releases you into the market and can val validate your expertise in what he has trained you to be, you know, and to do. So, so the father calls all the, all the relatives together and the neighbors and say, in case this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, I'm pleased with the work of his hand. And then in case you come to my, to my shop and you didn't meet me or have traveled, Give the job to this, my, my son. He will do it the way I will do it. And that was exactly what the Lord said to Jesus Christ uh, when he came to the I mean to the Jordan 
Now, after he had fulfilled all righteousness, the Lord testified to me and said, to him and said, of him rather, and said, This is my son in whom I will please. And three times the Lord testified about Jesus Christ. He also testified of him when he got to the Transfiguration Mountain, when he accepted, I mean, I mean Elijah and Moses um, came to him and they discussed to him, him about the things related to his death, you know, and then he accepted it in principle to die. Then the Lord, God's, God's word also came and said, this is my son in, in whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. And then when he resurrected from the dead, in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and in verse 6, and in Acts chapter 13, verse 34, he said, when he again, when he bring it in, the first begotten from the dead, he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, let all the angels of God worship him. So that was the last point. But you see, the first point is very important. The first uh, uh, testimonial is very, or testimony of God is very important. That is what makes us, brings us into sonship. Of course, we have to still walk in the step when we get to the place where we have to die. And that was where we, we focused a lot on that yesterday. You know, that these people that are beheaded in, um, who died, who, who, had, who, who went through the motions of death in the fourth seal. You know, the fourth seal was uh, a, 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 a horse rider that was gray with a horse, the horse was uh, uh, was gray, you know, um, but the word gray there actually means chloros, and chloros means that which is green. That's where you get the word chlorophyll from, you get the word chloroplast from. It means life, it means that with life, and but death was riding upon him. That was the last ministration of Christ to the believer. He ministers death to the things of the world, to the passions of the world and the passion of the flesh. He ministers it to the believer. When the believer dies the dead, then there is a resurrection. That's what we see in the fifth seal. So when those who are resurrecting the fifth seal resurrected, they began to cry to God. Oh Lord, we see that also in the book of Zechariah. He said, they began to cry, oh Lord God, holy and true. How long would it take for you to avenge us over those who dwell on the earth? Um, I don't want to explain too much about that, so I don't go. Um, into certain depths that we're not going to wriggle out of. So, uh, so uh, they were waiting in other words for their triumphant rule for the kingdom age to come. And God says, "Don't worry. Um, the, there are some brethren that are going. They are, the, some of your co-servants, your fellow servants, need to die the kind of death that you died." So that was what. He, and then Bible says he, he, he gave them white garments. Hallelujah. And then those white garments suited them for that time. You know, and then that's talking about this, the many, many series of believers um, uh, since the time of the apostles who have come into the place of ultimate maturity, but who were not given the opportunity to begin to rule and to reign physically on the earth because the number of the people of God that should be killed as they were was made, was actually fulfilled. And they will use a particular word that what are they use for the word matire? The word matire means a witness. You no, know, uh, and what what like I said yesterday also, when you're talking about witnessing, um, um, when you come to the law court and you are witnessing to the veracity of the fact, you're saying, I saw this man killing him. You cannot witness to that and now say again that you didn't see the man killing him. So when you have a situation of you being a witness, it's like opportunity cost. The one you have left is the forgotten alternative. What does that mean? In other words, you are have said, okay, I am supporting this viewpoint. You can't support that viewpoint and support this viewpoint. So what does being a witness for Christ mean? It means that I am saying Christ is alive in me. I want to live the Christ life. And in order to live the Christ life, the satanic, human, Adamic life is the for God alternative. We have to live that one. So in order to live that one, it creates emotion like, like unto death. That is why the scripture calls it death. That is why the fourth horse rider was ministering death to the believer. The horse riders of Revelation in chapter 6 were actually the manifestations of Christ as he journeys in strength into the believer's heart. Hallelujah. So, so we come into this place now. When So, so this servant, these fellow servants who are supposed to be beheaded or to be martyred, like the guys who had the first ministration of death to them under the fourth seal, they are the ones we're seeing now. Say your fellow servants are going to receive the same thing you receive. And we said yesterday that this beheading does not mean a, a physical decapitation. And in this martyrdom, the word martyr actually means to be witness. Hallelujah. This martyrdom does not mean somebody that is being, um, um, 
I had it to the point of death. Like, say, okay, maybe they, they went to uh, uh, play two states and they began to catch some believers. Say, because you're a Christian, we're going to shoot you. Say, oh, please don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. That is not the matyadom that the Bible is talking about. Yes, that is a type of matyadom, but the one, the matyadom that the Lord is talking about is that which occurs, that even if that physical one occurs at all, that believer that has been so arrested to be killed does not protest. He does not say, don't kill me, don't kill me. Well, he does not, he has totally yielded everything to Christ. Because you see, the real matyadom is the one we face daily, the choices we make daily to die or not to die, to be alive to Christ and to die to the world and to sin and Satan and the flesh are or not to die. That is actually what Matadon is. So God was talking to, the, to him there, to John there, and he was showing him about God, Christ's journey to the heart of the believer so that his kingdom will be formed in the heart of the believer. Hallelujah. So that's what um, Paul was talking to. Them. Now, now these are the fellow servants that we are now seeing here that are supposed to be matured. So, you know, um, if you look at the book of Revelation, you see the same thing repeating itself, the same thing repeating itself. You will see this thing repeating itself also in the trumpets. You see this thing repeating itself again also in Revelation in chapter 12. You understand? You see this thing repeating itself again in Revelation in chapter 14. You see it in Revelation in chapter 15. You see in Revelation in chapter 21. You see in Revelation in chapter 22. The same process it, the book of Revelation is the book of repetitions of the beginning of the journey of God in Christ with the believer and the ultimate arrival of the believer in Christhood. Praise God. So that's what it's about. Now, now it says, and I heard the number of those who were sealed. So the, what the way it is described this way is what was described in the in the seals is described as sealing on the forehead here, you know. Um, the seal when the first seal was open, I had one of the one of the four living creatures saying, shouting, come and see. And I saw a white horse rider having a crown upon his head and a bow in his hand, and, and he was given power to to I mean he was going forth to con conquering and to conquer. That was the beginning of Christ's life in us. When Christ comes into our life, he doesn't want to leave anything for Satan. That's why we find a lot of struggles in our lives. <laughs> That's why it's not it's difficult for us to lie. It's difficult for us to cheat. Even if you are cheating, you are suffering. Because you are a believer, because Christ is interested. He doesn't want anything for Satan. So he goes for conquering and to conquer. So that ended in the fifth seal. And then to the sixth seal. Now, maybe some other time we'll look at the seals again. And especially the sixth seal, this is very powerful. And a lot of people don't understand about the sixth seal. Very, very, very powerful. Maybe some other time we look at the seals again. So it is what happened in the seals that is repeating here in the Revelation in chapter 7. It is now called here ceilings. The ceilings on the forehead. Now, this forehead relates to the thought life. When your, your, your forehead is your thought life. You know, so God is, and in those days we explained yesterday that in those days, when seals, you know what you call seals, that your stamp today, okay. When we opened our, uh, when we registered our ministry with the CAC, Corporate Affairs Commission, we, we got this, we, we, we did a seal in our name, you know, in the name of the company, because the bank and some other important places of business is going to, they are going to uh, request that you would have your, your business seal on it. So the seal says, this is mine. The content of this book is my own. The content of this document is my own. It belongs to this organization. So when God is talking about a ceiling on the head of the he's not talking about 777 because the Antichrist wants the 66. He's talking about that, that which makes the content of the believer's mind of God. Did you get that? That where God can say, okay, ceiling, yeah. Ceiling, yes. Ceiling, yes. Ceiling, yes. And he's sealing us. How is he sealing us? By bringing us through processes by which our mind can come into the divine union, into union with Christ. For example, there are some people that don't like, some God is just, just bringing difficult people your way, difficult people that are not grateful, who that are not grateful, who that will rubbish you, and all of that. God is trying to teach you to walk in the love of God. <laughs> you have some love. Everybody, everybody has got some love. Uh, many years ago, 
I watched uh, Nuremberg trials about the the uh, the Nazi uh, the, the during Second World War, the, the Nazi German officers, and I saw that you know they, they killed six million Jews, even more than six million Jews. They were using caterpillars to carry dead bodies in the camps. But you know that these guys, when they went home, they showed videos when they went to the brought flowers for their wife, their wife, they, they pegged their wife, they kissed their wife, they kissed their daughters. And so I can't remember the image of one of them carrying his daughter gingerly and loving that daughter and giving her a peg and, and um, rubbing her hair. And I said, well, you're giving love to your own daughter, but you cannot transfer that same love to some other human beings. You understand? So we have love to some extent. And we have we have a, we have boundaries to our love. Say, ah, if you ever do this in lie lie, I can never forgive you. Sorry if you are if you're a white person. Uh, what I mean that forever I could never forgive you. If you ever did this to me, now anytime you say that, God is going to bring people that will do that to you. Telling you the truth. Many years ago, we used to read Reverend Higgins' book. Reverend Higgins' book, <laughs> Reverend Higgins said, never say, God, I don't want to go to I, I don't want to go to China. I said, God, he's going to send you there. I don't want to go to Africa. He will send you there. That thing you're afraid of, he will send you there. That thing you don't want to do. And especially when it contravenes the life of Christ in man, in the believer, God will bring people that will bring you to your knees until they deal with you, deal with you, deal with you. After a while, you just give up. Say, okay, I will love every man, whether they are grateful or they are not grateful. Hallelujah. I will just have love. And that's when that is only when peace can come. Without that, you see, Jesus wants to take everything. He doesn't want to leave any part of us. You know, you remember when, when, when Israel, when Israel wanted to leave Egypt, and then the, the Pharaoh said, "No, you can go, but leave your children." Said, ah, no, 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 we're not leaving our children. You can go, leave your wives. No, 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 no. leave your cattle. No, 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 we're going to. Every, we need all the cattle. Okay, leave your pans and pots and clothes. We're going with everything. Jesus wants to go with everything. Jesus doesn't want anything that is um um that the enemy can use in your life. So he wants to, he wants to, <laughs> he wants to own everything. He wants to own you. And you know, there are some little, even in the service of God, when you're serving the Lord, there are some little, little things that are still of the world of man, human ambition and certain things. He will deal with it until he removes it. Until nothing of the world, sin and Satan is found in us. That's when we attain true peace. Hallelujah. So that's what he's talking about here. He's talking about the fact that he wants to seal our mind so that he can go and sleep and because he knows that ah, um, um, if Dele is there, he will do the right thing. That's what kingdom rule is about. That's why it is not about whether Israel will rule. No, that should set you that matter of Israel in your heart. God is not treating people because of ethnic grouping. See, he has covenanted with their fathers and he will give them material blessing. But when it comes to the ruling in the kingdom, rule in the kingdom means that you, you are holier than the people that you are going to rule over. Because if you are not holier than them and more righteous than them, you will do worse than the sons of Adam did. Hallelujah. So, so it's not about um, uh, who is an Israelite. I want to wear clothes of an Israelite. And an Israelite, all of those things and totems and tokens don't really mean much. <laughs> Praise God. If it helps our faith, fantastic. Good prayer shawls and all of that. If it helps our faith, oh, fantastic! But see, uh, my brother, my sister, there are people who never even know about any Jews at all that they live. The Babas who, who accepted Christianity back in the day, they never met any Jew, they never dressed like them, they never had anything like them, and they, they walk with God. You understand? Uh, but if it helps your faith in some other way, then it's a good thing. Hallelujah. God will, God will use anything that helps us. You know, if you believe that there's something to it, it's okay. It's good. But it's really, on the, the, God does not require some of those things. God does not require them. There is a spiritual manifestation of them or translation of them that God requires from us. So, okay. So, okay. So, so what was this scene about? Now it says, of the tribe of um, Judah were still um, 12,000. Now, the word number 12, number 12 is a governmental word. That's where we begin to unpack these things. The word number 12 um, is a governmental word. Now, the government of the deep is ruled by what? By the sun. It's headed by the sun. Am I right? Because Jesus, I mean, in Genesis chapter 1, he said, the sun to rule the deep, which is the greater light, and the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. 
So we have the rulership of the day and the rulership of the night. And the sphere of the day is 12 hours. The sphere which the night occupies is 12 hours. So that talks about divine government. It's about government. Now, there are things called constellations. We might have heard of them, horoscopes that people look at in newspapers in those days to look at what their bed day, what they are going to face that day. God doesn't want you to do that because that's, that's nonsense. The way God leads us is by his word and by the Holy Spirit. Look at that. You see, but there is a genuine constellation knowledge that the Lord just put there. And there are 12 constellations, you know, 12 constellations, but one of these days we're going to be teaching about them. You know, 12 constellations, that is talked about the, the divine government also. There are 12 months. And all of these things are mathematically correct. It's not just that some people just choose, okay, let's just have 12 months more. We just discovered that the, the, the moon reigns, the moon comes in, is at the head of itself, at, 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 the, at the head of its shining, and then it begins to ebb, it begins to come in little by little, and it begins to ebb continually until it dies. Just use the word dies, and then it comes again, and then it repeats the process, and then it comes again, and then it, and it does that 12 times in a year. So they did they, they 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 did a mathematical um calculation of those days, and they say, okay, in January, 31 days, in February, 28 days. 20, or 27 days in a leap, uh, 27 now, or 20, 28 days, then 29 days in a leap year. You understand? And all of that, all of those were mathematically correct, even up until now, even with the computer generated um, mathematical formulas. What those fathers did is still correct it today. It's 12 months. Hallelujah. You know, and the woman's body is also open 12 months. You know, okay. Um, in a year. So it's a number of divine government. I'm just telling you this is why it's a number of divine government. That number 12. It's symbolic. It is not It is not that God is going to get 12 people of the tribe of Judah and then we see them because they belong to Judah. It, it, that, would be, that would be that would not be fair. That would not be impartial. God is not a partial God. <laughs> the judge of the whole earth as Abraham I mean, told him when he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah should do righteousness. Hallelujah. So God is not going to take Judah and Reuben and, and bring it to them, bring them to themselves. No. And bring it, bring them to himself and then seal them and then leave the Jebu people and then leave Undo people, leave all your people, leave uh, Kaduna people, leave uh, Fulani people. God doesn't do that. So everything is concluded in Christ. And all of the things that he's talking about, it, they are signs because the book of Revelation is a book of signs. Hallelujah. They are typologies. And those typologies, are, they are still a scripture-based thing. They are still in scripture. You know, they, you can understand what it means from looking at other passages of scripture. Nobody can just say, okay, this means this because I just fancy that for you me. No. <laughs> doesn't work that way. This means this, because the scripture says here, because the scripture says here, because even nature teaches us here, then the scripture says there, then you can get scriptures for it, then we can agree with you that that's what it means. And then when we look at scripture, we see that the Lord, I mean, uh, 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 Abraham, I mean, God God promised him that we will have uh, children. And um, I don't want to go into that depth, but let's just leave that one aside. You know, but eventually Jacob had 12 sons. And you know that Esau also had 12 sons. In fact, Ishmael had 12 sons. Because the natural comes first before the spiritual. Hallelujah. So it means that those 12, 12, 12, the, the false 12 are, are trying to copy a certain law of God. That's a certain divine order. Hallelujah. That's what they're trying to copy. A certain type of divine order. So so, but the people, the, the, the person that got it was Joseph, I mean, was uh, Jacob, and he had 12 sons. Do you know that with all the, with all the additions, even though we can, by the time, by the time the tribes all began, God still called them the 12 tribes, even though you can logically say they were 13 now, because, I mean, um, Jacob brought them, I mean, brought two more tribes. The Simeon was removed at a point in order to calculate right. 
So it must be 12. You remember the story of, uh, of Elijah, when he was going to destroy the prophets of Baal, when there was a contest between him and himself and the prophets of Baal, what did Elijah do? Uh, when it was his turn, after all the prophets of Baal have been demonstrating and killing themselves and, uh, and wounding themselves and all, what did he, what did he do? Um, uh, Elijah repaired, uh, brought, made an altar of the Lord with 12 stones. Why did he not make it 11? Why did he not make it 12? Why did he not make it 15? Why did he not say, let's bring many stones so that God can be impressed? Why did he not do less or more? 12 stones. Because it was, if God must confirm your sacrifice, he must be on the right altar. The right number of the altar of God. Did you get that? Okay. So 12 stones. And then he put the sacrifice on it. And then while the word was sitting in his mouth, fire came. Pow! Hallelujah. Look at it. Look at the, the gates of Jerusalem were 12. Hallelujah. I'm sure you are seeing certain things now. The tribes of Israel were 12. And then you know that also that the disciples of Jesus were 12. Even Jesus, when he finished, the Bible says he had many disciples. One day he went up to the mountain after an all night prayer unto God and he called unto them, unto himself, 12 of his disciples, that they might be with him first, and that he may send them out to minister, and he saw named them apostles. Why did he not make 50? Wouldn't it be better if it was 70? What if it was 500? That they will reach many more places. Why did he make it 12? Because Jesus understood that it's a spiritual principle of divine government, that if God must say, this is mine, it must be 12. That's what we're seeing here. So do not the you know, when you look at the, 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 the gates of the city of God, where well, let's just assume, let's assume now for the purpose of explanation that the city of God was this physical city. The gates of the city of God were 12 in number. 12 gates of the city. 12 foundations of the walls of the city. Praise God. It's a 12, 12, 12. Hallelujah. So this 12 actually means something. And there's a thousand actually means. Um, Eternal, you know, um, a day, a day, a day unto the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day, so it's a day. So, um, and Jesus and the Lord told them, He said, They will eat of the fruits to Adam and Eve, you shall surely die that day. But the, 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 uh, one of the, um, interpretations of a day. One of the extreme interpretations of a day is a thousand years. It's how a day can also a day can be twenty four can be twelve hour of the day when there's the sunlight. A day can be twenty four hours of a particular day, the evening and the morning, the first day. A day can also mean a period of time when God is doing a particular thing. That's a prophetic day. Praise God. A day can mean when God wants to visit a people. That's a, also a prophetic day, a day of visitation. A day can now mean a thousand years. Hallelujah. So in that day, the Lord alone shall be exalted when the Lord wants to do something. Now, a thousand years is the number of immortality. It means that if man was able to live up to a thousand years, he will come into immortality. Nobody was able to live up to a thousand years. I don't know whether Adam lived up to a thousand years, but the Lord said in that day, maybe he had lived about 2,000 years before, before he sinned. I don't know. You know, but he said on that same day, that day you won't pass it. If it's on the third 1,000 years, you won't pass it. And Adam didn't pass it. The one, the one, the guy that lived a long, long, long time, Methuselah, lived for 969 days. He didn't pass that day. Hallelujah. So a thousand signifies the, the, the period, I mean, uh, immortal. It's, it's that which is eternal, that which is immortal. That's why the Bible says Jesus is going to raise for a thousand years. And when the thousand years were complete, Hallelujah. We're waiting for the millennium. The millennium is actually a thousand years. And then when, 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 when we come into immortality, the millennium starts. Hallelujah. And then we will see people that will be able to live up to a thousand years. Hallelujah. Because they will have, they will have had all their minds, you know, and um, uh, 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 sealed by God. Okay. So, okay. So we have determined what the number 12 is about. We have determined what a thousand is. So we say 12,000. So, the government of God in eternity is accomplished and fulfilled in these people. 
Now, why did he mention the name, um, the names of the tribes? Okay, if we look at the, uh, the book of Revelation in chapter 21, because of our time, uh, we have just about 12 minutes to finish up. Well, I'll borrow maybe five more minutes from your time, you know, to just for us to just round up. Now, um, in Revelation in chapter 21, and in verse 9, he mm -hmm. described the city. He you know, described the city of God. And um, he says, I, I saw a mountain, and I was taken to a great mountain, and I saw the city of God descending in Jerusalem and all of that. Uh, I think that's 22, chapter 22. But this one was talking about the new Jerusalem. And he said he had great walls, walls high and mighty. And then he said, the gates, the, the, he said, and the wall, of the city was four square. Four square. Now it's not four square gospel church. Four square gospel church is premised on Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer, the Baptizer, and the Holy Ghost, and the soon coming King. <laughs> That's the revelation given to any simple MacPherson, MacPherson, by which he established four square gospel church. So it's not about four square. It's the, the four square that I'm talking about now is the structure of the kingdom. It is a cube, really. it is a square. It's not rectangular, it's a square. You know, can you imagine a sugar that is a cube? So, you know, every part is filled. There is no part that is not filled. It's tight, it's, it's, it's congested, it's full of divine life. That's the city of God. And when Bible talks about the city of God, the city of God is, does not mean necessarily a physical city. Uh, it doesn't only mean a spiritual city uh, that is that has spiritual materiality. Um, but it means it's an allegory, and it talks about a, the, the, the system in which the life of God uh, is lived out. That's the city of God. Okay, let me let me have our um, let me let me make it a little simpler by saying, okay, let's imagine it as a spiritual place. So when you come to the city of God, like for example, you go to you go to America. There's a there's a there's a there's a culture of America. One of my friends, I still remember him very well. Uh, I don't mention names because it's funny. Well, one of my friends, anyway, he's, he, he's cool in America when he was young, a uh, younger, a younger man. And then he said one of the problems he, he had with America was that he could not just kiss anywhere. He said, in the that you cannot just kiss anywhere. Sorry if you don't understand that. You that what kind of bad place is this that you cannot just enjoy yourself and peace and urinate anywhere? <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, because there's a culture to that place, to to the to their campus, and you can't just be united anywhere. You know, um, maybe it was it was you know something that you know um, he felt he needed liberty in and all that. You know, but uh, because there's a culture in that to that place, so he couldn't just do anything in life. You get to some houses, and then you wonder whether you should sit down in the so on the sofa or not because of the way the place is. The place is so so very fluffily decorated, so very beautiful. There's a culture there. Maybe you're coming from somewhere there's less in adornments and in, and in furniture quality. You understand? So the city of God is a place where there's another culture. And the culture that governs the city of God is the life of God. Hallelujah. So when the Bible talks about entrance into the city of God, it gives you the ability, the ability to lead the kind of life in that city. You understand? So it's not per se that when we die, we're not going to the city of God. Yes, well, we can go. It's possible that that obtains them. Yeah, of course, there's, there's a place where the Lord lives. There's a way, there's a place where the dead, uh, the, 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 those who have slept in the Lord go, and all of that. We know that there's a place where they go. Yeah. And then, okay, let's assume that's the city of God. But you see, that city of God transverses that. It's not just, it's not just limited to those who are in heaven. It's also for those who are on earth. Those who are on earth can live the lifestyle of that city in heaven. We don't have to die and go to heaven before we live the lifestyle of that city in heaven. That's what I'm trying to say. So, so on this city, he said the city, uh, it's good for us to make eye contact with the scriptures, but because of time, I don't want us to spend so much time making contact with uh, scripture. You know, um, okay. All right, so th that, that city, he said he has 12 foundations. I'm, I'm coming to the place, the reasons why we have the names of the apostles here, I mean, of the of the tribes here. You see, the, the city has 12 foundations. And upon the foundation were the names of the apostles of Christ. 
you get that 12 apostles of the Lamb. The one the Lamb chose. One of them dissimulated. I believe Paul joined. Did you get that? Because he was born as one born out of deep season. The disciples, the rest of the disciples chose one person, I think Matthias or so. Uh, we didn't hear of Matthias anymore. They should just have left that guy, you know. Maybe we should have heard of him later. <laughs> Although we didn't hear of some of the apostles again also, but we knew that they were in Jerusalem. You know, but that's just a joke. I don't know which one God chose, whether it was Paul or Matthias, but um, but one of them was there, but I'm more keen to see agreeing that Paul was chosen because foundation means that which lays the bearing of a structure. Foundation means that it determines the basic principles of the life of a system. You have the communist system, you have the socialist system, you have capitalist system. There are certain foundations upon which that those system hold fast and firm upon the mind and upon the societies of man. So these are the foundations. So the foundations of the body of Christ is upon, and Paul talks about it. He said, he built the foundation, if you have to, he built it upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ being the determining stone. Hallelujah. So is the apostles, that's why it's not at the foundation of the apostles we are free to reject. Although the problem is that we don't know most of what the apostles actually said. So you have you can go and inject the things that are actually scripture. A lot of people reject the things that are scripture, but they don't even know the apostles' doctrine, all of the apostles' doctrine in the first place. Praise the Lord. So, so what do you see? You see that um now in so upon the foundations were named names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, and then all of this is in Revelation chapter 21. Okay, we may not be to see it tonight, so please check on it and later. Then he now said that upon the, he has gates also. He has walls. What are the functions of walls? The walls are to determine the um, territorial integrity of a particular geo geographical entity. The territorial integrity of a particular ge geographical entity. In other words, why my house is not part of the streets that is directly facing us is because my house has a gate, has a wall. So the gate lets in or shuts out, but the wall permanently shuts out. That's why the thief is only the thief that rides over the wall into the house, but the, the, the true shepherd comes through the gate and he leads us through the gate. So you don't go over, you don't ride rough shot over the apostles, the scriptures, the things that are known in scripture, you know, I mean, the things that are written in scripture, even though God's revelation comes to us and me daily. You know, that's the caution about that because, you know, we are we have limited understanding and knowledge. And in this day and time, God is bringing fresh understanding and knowledge to this world. So somebody says, I've never heard about it before, so it's not of God. No, you don't know too much of the scripture to determine that a lot of times. But even if you don't know certain things, the witness, the, the Holy Ghost will witness into your heart. I don't know why this man has arrived at this point. But I guess this is true. And that's a true test sometimes when we don't, when our heads don't have enough understanding to be able to accept the validity of a thing or reject it. Hallelujah. So now you now said upon the upon the gates were written, eh? upon the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes again. And you see that? So this thing that is called sealing here, just interpret it like what is said about the about the names being the names of those 12 tribes being upon the walls of the city of God. Look at that. So it does not mean tribe here per se. What it really means is that that names, those names rather, have messages for us that grants us that grant us rather access into the divine life that can enable us to become bona fide citizens or inhabitants of that city. Okay, okay, for example. This is what I mean when I say bona fide in, in, inhabitants, I said citizens before, but it can be a citizen of the city of God, you may not be living there. If, okay, there's one people that are thieves, recognized thieves, but they will start to give their lives to Christ. So they are born again, but I think they, they have acknowledged Jesus Christ. They are, but they are not living in the city. They are living outside the city. They are living outside the city. You get that. 
So we must enter. Now, let's see Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Let's see that one. So let's read that. Let's read that one. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments. Did you see that? Blessed are those who do what? Who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life, for the tree of life is in that city, and may enter through the gates upon which is written the names of the 12 tribes, that they may enter through the gates into the city. Let's get that. So what does this do? It gives us, so when you see the name on the gate, the name is giving you a message. What's the message that the name is conveying to you? If you embrace that message, when that message is engrafted into your heart, then the door opens for you. Then you enter. Let me explain. Let's look at the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, one by one. One by one. The name Reuben actually means behold the sun. That is the revelation of sonship. So when you when you come in through Reuben, I know it started with Judah here, but for the for the for the point of, uh, reason of explanation, let's look at um, and let's look at it in an orderly man, the, uh, the order of birth. Reuben means behold the sun. It is the revelation of sonship. So in other words, when you get to Reuben, when you come into Christ, that's the first gate you get to. Let's assume that. I know this God talks about Judah here. Now, and that agrees with the words of Jesus. Jesus Christ said, except a man be born again, he cannot see. He cannot see. Okay, so what does Reuben say? The word Reuben means behold a son. See a son. It is the revelation of sonship. It is the revelation of that which is possible, the, ex the most extreme possibilities that the believer can have in Christ. That is what comes to you first when you come to Christ. And that was what we saw. We saw it as in a glass darkly. You know, that was what that was it. That was why we had zeal so much. We wanted to fast. We wanted to pray. We wanted to do a lot of things. And you know, we wanted to come into Christ at the same time, all at the same time. Hallelujah. We wanted to become Jesus, you know. And um, one of my friends, who was the son of the rich man. One of those days, he was praying. But we're always praying, fasting, praying. You know, when I was about 17 years old, we were fasting, praying three days, three nights, but in our fellowship in the whole world. And then we would carry chair, the story building, we'll go and arrange, and all of that. Then, in those days, we were fasting, I pray, fasting, I pray, but we pray. Our pastor, Rabbi Olashori, led us to pray for two, one year, every day. We're coming to fellowship to pray every day. Today, if you say people should come to fellowship to, to even come to enjoy themselves, they don't want to come. We walked. I walk from Iwo Road in Ibadan. I walk to Mokola to attend the meeting. If you know Ibadan very well, to attend full gospel meeting. Okay, so sorry. Somebody's uh, pastor of Ferreira. Okay, I'll be able to read later. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, this is Pastor Adioye. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. I walk from, I'll read that before we go. Please, somebody remind me that I need to read all that before we go tonight. I walk from Mokola. In a, um, rather for me, we to Mokola to attend a full gospel business fellowship because we saw the possibilities of sonship. We saw what we could become in Christ. We saw another life. There was vision granted to us. That's what you see when you come into Christ. Hallelujah. You know, and we're ready to give anything to it. Wanted to go to heaven immediately, wanted to evangelize the whole world. But God knew that there were some things inside us that were not yet. <laughs> we're not ready yet. We thought we were ready. We're not ready yet. <laughs> we're not ready. We're not ready yet. But we thought we were ready. So behold the sun. That's what you see. The first gate. Then the second gate, divine hearing. Simeon. It means to hear. This hearing does not mean um, vision and dreams. No, it's beyond that. This hearing means hearkening. The tendency to hearken. For McBorough. You know, it's different from born on in Yoruba. Born on means to hack it, to be obedient. Uh -huh. you know, it's, it's the same word that is that can be, it's, it's almost sound, it's synonymous with hear, to just hear that somebody say, oh, they scored a goal. Also, I heard, so it's here, here, but one is deeper than the other. 
happen to happen to here. It also embodies it of. Then Levi is joined, joined, divine joining, that your affection is joined to the Lord. Hallelujah. Then the other one, Judah, is praise. Um, you begin to come into the realms of divine praise. And that praise does not mean that you, you are praised alone. Not a natural person be praised, but you are living to the praise of God. They have gone to live to the praise of God. Then Dan, George, you can discern. You can come into discernment. Hallelujah. Not discernment whether this person is evil or bad. No. Or good. No. It's a discernment of the ways of God. Then Naphtali is wrestling. Oh, we thought we could be able to judge. We have come to place order, then we'll be able to rest. But with God, certain things we will not just leave, no matter how much you try it. So we begin to wrestle, like, the, like, like Jacob wrestled with the angel. And then we come to the place of a true God. You know, that's when um, we come into community. We begin to recognize communities that it's not only you. You know, Elijah said, Oh, it's only me. Oh, it's only me. I'm the only one that is left. Or say, shut up. There are 7,000 names that are not bowed down to bow. It's not only you. And then, Asha, happy. The joy of the Lord begins to arise. Maybe it, there was not so much joy in all the other experiences, but now the joy begins to come. And then, wages, Issachar. You know, uh, you begin to have wages. And then you have um, Zabulon habitation. Now, we may see all of these things change, but I'm saying it because of simplicity. Even though it is changed in, the, in this place, because you may see Ephraim, I don't know whether Ephraim is mentioned here, but um, I guess it was just the, the, the original trail that I mentioned here. Now, then you see Zabulon habitation. We're going to see the habitation of God. It's, it's already telling you that it's coming. You understand? You begin to feel, not, not, you see, this is a state. It is not an experience. You understand? It is not just an experience that happens. Oh, ah, when service happened yesterday, I just felt the presence of God. Okay, that's good. That's habitation. But it is not just that. It is a state that you have come to that place where you remain on that place. You are never removed from that place anymore. There's a habitation of God. That's where you dwell continually. And then Joseph, addition. But at another life, the, 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 the vital experience of that life. And then Benjamin, you begin to rule with Christ. So what does that tell you? Now, these are the names that are on the walls. These are the names of the ceilings. So we are still, um, when you come here to the gate, you, you are still, then you enter. That means you are able to explain divine life in that area. Everybody are able to explain divine life in the area of giving. They can give, 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 give. But don't tell them that. Don't cheat them. You can't take that. Sorry for the, as far as the sign for the grant. Or five hundred thousand. Then this Hello? I said, okay. You okay, please. Are you talking to us? Oh, <laughs> somebody's uh, phone is unmuted. Please, can you mute your phone? Praise God. I mean, something five hundred. You know. So, so in this ceiling is like the gates. It like the names on the gate. The gate is your soul. The gate is in your soul. Ladder. Let me see. The gate is in your soul. So, um, or God intends to build the gate, I mean, rather, build the city in your soul. So, as you enter, your soul experiences that which is synonymous with um, the lifestyle of the kingdom in that area until your, your the kingdom is totally built in your soul. And then you experience divine union. So, this is what this is about. It is not about it's not about whether it was Israel or not. So let's let's read. Then eventually you start from Reuben when you see the potentials and the possibilities in God and, and through Christ Jesus. And then you end up Benjamin when you are sitting down now in real ruling. You know, these are things that bring us to real ruling. When we when we just want to harvest our initial salvation and make it the beginning and the end of the journey, it's very ridiculous. It doesn't work that way. So okay. You are reigning in life. Then you, you, are, you can't commit any thoughts. Okay, the only way you can reign in life is by praying. When you pray, you can rule through pain. No, but we're not to rule, really rule, real rule. You see, but the things that are preventing the rule is the fact that the life of Christ is not yet totally developed in our souls. Those are the things that are preventing the rule. 
So let us always say, okay, we you know we have made us to sit down together and cry Jesus. How how well are we sitting? If the church was sitting, the political situation in Nigeria would be better. If the church was sitting, you know, uh, if we want to depend on that scripture alone to justify the fact that we are sitting, no, I'm not saying we are not sitting. In a way, we are talking about in the temporal structure of this world. You understand? I know in your life as a person, you can sit. You can sit it. You can command sickness, bow. You can command darkness, bow. You can command lack, bow. But when it comes to real I mean, societal determining the circumstances and the policies that affect humanity, you, we are not sitting yet. We are sitting, but we are not exercising that authority yet. So this is the process by which we now begin to exercise authority. Because without this, the kingdom cannot come. And without the kingdom coming, we cannot exercise lasting authority. We can have a revival. We can have the, the uh, Eva Roberts revival, the Roberts Brothers revival. We can have uh, the Welsh revival. It will come and go. We can have uh, the Calvinist movement. It will come and go. And they will leave solid structures. You know, We can have um, Harvard University built on, uh, on Christian education. But they will take it over from us. We can have um, the all the Ivy Leagues. They will take it over from us if this life is not established in us. If we don't learn to go through the gates into the city, we can't depend on. We can't leverage only on um, that which the Bible says Christ has done in us. We have to allow God to walk in us. Without the working of God in us, what Christ has done in us will not matter. What Christ has done for us, rather, will not matter. We will take, we will have some benefits, we will be rich, we will be comfortable, we will not be hungry, we will be healed. But we can't exercise lasting authority. Why? Because there are certain things, because the throne of the universe is assigned to Christ. And only those, and they are not looking for Jesus, they are looking for, they are looking for Christ. Do you know the difference now? They are not looking for Jesus, they are looking for Christ. Christ is a title. It is not Jesus' surname, as a lot of us know. So once you come into Christ by following, walking with God, it gets to the place where you can sit on the throne of Christ. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12 says, but we know that we are not yet sitting. We are sitting. We are, it's only Christ that is sitting on our behalf now. So these are the things. Now, now let's look at, okay, oh, 9-11. We should be on our way out now. Okay, but let me just read this. Verse 9. After he had brought him to Benjamin. After these days, I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, people, tongues, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Why did he talk about nations and tribes that could not be numbered? Because these are the people who who were being sealed. He gave them as the name of the 12 tribes because he was communicating spiritual principle to us. By the time they now finished sealing them, he now said, oh, I see these guys. Now, now look at them. <clears throat> and they had palm trees, branches in their hand, palm branches in their hand, and crying out with a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb. All the angels stood around about the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures and fell to their faces before the Lord um, for the throne and worship was saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might mm -hmm. be to our God forever and ever. In SCM, in those days, we used to sing that song, Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord forever. God, now, then one of the elders answered, saying, Who are these arrayed in white robes? You see. The same thing that they gave the guys that went through this same process to the seal. The Bible says they gave them white robes. They are giving them white robes here. It's the same thing. It's the same process that the Lord is talking about. When you look at Revelation chapter 8, you see the trumpets. All of these feasts of the Lord. That's why I was asking people, they say, do you know about the feasts of the Lord? Do you know about the... You don't know about the feasts of the Lord, then we need to know. It doesn't mean that that is what will take us into... You know, some of these things, you know, it's just working with God that will take us in there. But sometimes it helps to know. In order to be to communicate God's will, God's word to other people. Hallelujah. You know, so it's it's very, very important for us to know. Praise God. 
Now, and then, now he now said, sir, uh, he said, who are these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And I said to him, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of Jesus Christ. What is the great tribulation there? The scripture says it is too much so you go to. Believer. Every believer, if you cut your own, okay, I'm seized. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Okay. Now, if you cut your own, you will go through it in another format, in another way. You go to that. Show. So if this is not the great tribulation where you begin to tell everybody, hey, if you know, I'm not doubting that that will come at any given time, but that's not this one. Not this, that's not. I don't, this is not, I definitely that this is not what the Bible is talking about here. It's not the great way they totally into the into and all that. No, it's, you're already going through your tribulation now. When you don't have money, and then you can you can easily steal, and you refuse to steal, so you have to walk three kilometers or ten kilometers to get to your house. That's tribulation. So we say affliction and tribulation we arise for the world's sake. It is the same thing. It is the way the Christ life is enhanced. It is the way no, no, you can't enhance the Christ life. It's the way it is, it is gotten. So everybody will go to their tribulation. Hallelujah. Some, you know, but you have grace. When you are looking at how many people go through their tribulations, you wonder why are these people able to go through this? Because when you are in your tribulation, you have grace. Now, oops. Because you believe that this is a very this is one physical tribulation where they'll be running after you have to believe that you also you have to have to wash your robe in a physical blood. This is they are made them white. How can you make how can you make your robe white in blood? Go and do an experiment. Get a red dye and we'll dip your white shirt or your white skirt or your white trousers inside it. Let's see whether it will come out white. These are figurative things. Say they have washed their robes and made it clean in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and they serve him day and night in his temple. These are his servants. The servants of God are not pastors and apostles. In a way, they are servants of God. Yeah? But see, the, the servants of God are not titular men. They are not apostles, pastors. I'm not, I'm not so sure. Please um, listen to your pastors. They are, they are, they are uh, listen to your uh, apostles. And then I am also a teacher, you know, I am also a ministering teacher and I want you to listen to me. But I'm saying when Bible talk about servant, it's talking about people who are serving God in the kitchen. When you are preferring your husband and then you're supposed to take, you're supposed to take there's something that is de a delicacy that you should, that if you are taking it, you know, um, nobody will know. And then as small as that, or as small, just as small as time, but you prefer the other person, so you give it to the other person. I don't want to use meat because meat is not a good example. So <laughs> in today's world, I don't know what it can be, you know, or you pick something, or there are two shirts that you need to pick, and then you and your friend are there saying, oh, my friend, pick your own first. And when he picks his own, which is the one that is the most desirable, something leaves your heart, oh, it's part of the tribulation. You're preferring another person. When people speak about you, and every time they speak about you, they speak evil about you, but you refuse to mention one evil about them. Going to your tribulation. Hallelujah. These are the tribulation of the saints. The, the difficulties that come to us as we attempt to live the life of Christ. That's the tribulation. It is not that, uh, war, and I'm not that 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 kind of time can come. But if that were the tribulation, eh? Wouldn't God be wouldn't God be partial huh? by allowing certain people to go through it? Then he didn't allow the apostles to go through, or he didn't allow people that lived in 1970 to go through. 
every generation of believers went through their own tribulation. Hallelujah. Every generation of Christians went through their own tribulation. There's nobody that will not go through their tribulation. There's nobody that will not go through their own tribulation. Hallelujah. Okay. They shall, okay, I think we are. You see, they shall, um, they shall no longer hunger. They shall, okay, let me read, let me read from here. Therefore, I'm finishing now. Therefore, they are in his temple. His temple is the city of God. And he who sits will dwell among them. They will have the presence of God. Uh, they have the validation of God. They shall neither hunger anymore. They don't need any philosophy. They don't need human principles to live their lives anymore. They are not hungry for anything. Christ is their satisfaction. God is their satisfaction. They shall neither anymore. The sun shall not strike them. No, any, hallelujah. What did he say? They are not going to be outer court believers. They are not going to be inner court believers anymore. When he say any heat, he meant the, the, the light of a candlestick because there's another place where he talked about. They are not going to be subject. They won't see. They won't need the light. That's, that's any heat there because candlestick also I mean, gives heat. The sun is in the outer court. It's a symbol of the outer court. Because that's the, place, that's the light of the outer court. The light of the inner place, of the holy place, is, is the candlestick. Okay. So for the Lamb, who is in the midst of the throne, we shepherd them. Eh? We shepherd them. And lead them to living fountains of water. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Hallelujah. Nothing moves them anymore. This is the kind. It's a lifestyle. It's a kind of life. It is a Christ life that God calls us to. Thank you very much, God's people. Can we just pray this night, this evening, and ask the Lord to grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation to understand this word. A lot, a lot more than, than I can preach. You know, I'm just saying what I've seen. It's deeper than that. It's simpler than that. Lord, grant us all the spirit of wisdom and revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to, uh, maybe, okay, um, I don't want people to go. That's why I was. I didn't want to pray on time because when I, when I pray, people go, "Oh, sin has finished. Let's be going." You know, and I see that a lot of people have actually exited now. But, um, exited, you know. Um, but I didn't want it to be like that because I still have some. Uh, we we have any person that I was going to read certain things. Let me just quickly first weekend of the month, Kingdom Journals, and then we have Apostolic Impressions every third Sunday, every third yeah Sunday or Saturday of the month, depending on uh, how the Lord leads us about that. Praise God. And then we is at uh, Guarimpa. You can find out from me, 31 Guarimpa. If you want to be a part of it, just meet on Sundays there. And in the most part, we do it online, mostly. Praise God. All right. So let me read this. Okay. To prove that mankind cannot please God by himself, hence, the failure in the Garden of Eden, in spite of Adam and Eve's level of innocence and glory. In any state, um, in any state, man still needs God. God, yeah. Man is created to triumph in God. Um, okay, somebody is greeting me. Happy birthday. Oh, my friend, Pastor Femi Adoye. Thank you very much, man of God. Thank you, uh, my pastor friend from South Africa. Uh, happy birthday, Reverend Matthews. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. It's a most beautiful way to celebrate the gift of life. Doing what your life is about. Congratulations, uh, bro. Stronger anointing in the new year in Jesus. And thank you, my friend. Uh, we knew our one another when I was 17. It was 18. There it was. Uh, where, and uh, we're in the same fellowship. Bafemi all over the best English there. And then we became um, leaders of the fellowship together. He became president and I became Bible study teacher. Um, somebody was, oh, so you're a Bible study teacher. So that's what you're sitting now. Where I don't think, where I think I've graduated to, uh, there was a time I was functioning more in the pastoral office and uh, another time in the book. I just found myself that and I'm keen to teach him now. But Pastor Femi is still a pastor. He was a pastor then. Thank you very much for greeting me here. Thank you, 
I know and almost everybody that I've seen here have greeted me today. Thank you very much for wishing me a happy birthday for your prayers. I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you very much. God bless you for your gifts, for things sent, you know, and all that. Aside you, you don't even know it was my birthday. They just sent something. I think that was the spirit upon them. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you very much. God bless you so much. Okay, so I want to appreciate people that who came tonight. I may not have everybody's name now because some people have left. Um, uh, 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 Pastor, uh, this is Pastor Ayobani in the church um, in Lube in um, Abuja here. Pastor Benga Shoba is in, uh, joining us from Portugal. Pastor Ayo Olukoyo. I hope I got it very well. Oh, brother, I don't know that. Pastor, God bless you. Eka, thank you very much. That's my friend's um, daughter in, in Lagos, Pastor Sibo's daughter. Thank you very much. Pastor Pera Bentura, Pastor Ventura. Ah, my brother, okay, we knew I want to order from Ife. Okay, time has gone for all those description. Pastor is from uh, in Essex, Essex rather, in the uh, United Kingdom. Uh, Dickness Jennifer Agua, um, uh, for being there, and she's, she's, she's. Uh, Dickness in our church, and she is in the good way. Um, Pastor Sophie is right from England. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, and Pastor David Gura, I'm sure, is there with you. That's your husband. Uh, thank you very much. That's Pastor Israel and Pastor Sophie. God bless you. Um, Prophet uh, Benjamin. Thank you very much. So, Shegu, Akito, thank you for being here from Lagos. Uh, Pastor, um, Pastor Atuluku, I mean, Prophet Atuluku. Is in Abuja, uh, in Grand Park here. So Sarah Bassi, uh, daughter, daughter of Zion, uh, she's um, she joined us from Scotland. Funola Adiremi, daughter of Zion, she's joined us from uh, my Tama in Abuja here. My wife is here. Thanks for the support all the years since we have met. Now, I want you to appreciate uh, my wife very much. She has been, um, uh, my support outside of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, um, my formal support since we met. And we have met um, together now. We have lived together now for more, for more years than we have lived our parents. Yeah. Thank you very much. That God bless you. Um, thank you very much for being here. My brother is from Ibadan. We're going to see very soon because I have a meeting in Ibadan with them very soon. Uh, it's a joy. You see, Abuja here. God bless you. Thanks to church here. Sister Linda, God bless you. I think Sister Linda, I think she's a part of his friend also. I think she's in Abuja here. God bless you. Um, Busayo, thank you very much. I've seen a male picture. I'm thinking that the Busayo that um, came about, I mean, that is in the uh, Apostolic uh, you know, Revelation. There's a teaching I've been on before Revelation on WhatsApp. I'm thinking that she's female, but I see a male figure here, a male picture. Here. God bless you, sir, for being here. The lack of our daughters here in Abuja. Thank you very much. Thanks for being around. Um, um, yeah, that's it. <clears throat> and then Shegun Akinloye. Oh, Pastor Shegun, thanks for being around. Uh, uh, my true son in the faith from Abuja is a pastor. I went to open their church. I'm building for them from three months ago. Uh, uh, in uh, Sokoto, rather. Sokoto. Sokoto. Sister Party, thanks for being around. Uh, San Kechi, thanks for being thanks for being around. Ah, uh, Braleki, Lilo, thanks for being around. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for being around, sir. It's in Lagos. Oh, Bishop William Eze, thanks for being around. He's in Abuja here with me. We are scheduled to meet. We need to meet. Okay, Shalom. Okay, thank you very much. And um, okay, Sister Temito Kadi, okay, thanks very much for being here from London, United Kingdom. Thanks for being here. Uh, Pastor Shegun from Mina. Wow, thanks for being here today, Social Group. Um, champions are selling the winner. Sister Beauty, thanks for being here from Lagos. Um, huh? I didn't hear you. Oh, is she around? I didn't see her. Oh, she just left. Okay. She just joined. Oh, you are very late. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Ajibade, my my friend's wife, and a pastor from the United States. Thanks for being around. Sister Beauty from Lagos, thank you. Pastor Fumi Ashalu, I appreciate you so much. Church of Met uh, Metamorphosis Church. Thanks for being around. Uh, she's, um, she's a co-laborer of the kingdom. 
in Abuja. My consequences, thanks for being around. And she's because here in Abuja, she was around for my birthday too. I am just a close uh, people who just came to visit with me. And I also think I saw Pastor, what's the name now? Uh, Prophet Abel earlier. I saw pa Prophet Abel. Okay, but he's no longer here uh, now. And the Pastor Frama, thanks for being around. I know uh, my sister was also, is also with you there. Thank you. Thank her very much on my behalf. I appreciate you so much. Uh, this is a meeting that will continue. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here with us. God bless you. Have a lovely, lovely night. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Lolade. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Yes, sir. Good, Good night. night sir. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.